Hello and welcome to another episode of Linux and Code. Today we're continuing the series on building a JSON API and today we are talking about paging. Let's get started. So before we can actually enable our API to page, we're gonna to need to make some changes to the models that we've created. So both on our user and our item model, we're going to need to make this change. And it's a pretty simple one. We're essentially going to create another object uh, that's an options object and we're going to set timestamps equal to true and we're going to do this for both of them and the reason for that is for our pagination key we're going to be using created at as a sort model and you do that so that you don't necessarily get random pages of content you get consistent paging so now that we've done that we need to do one more thing and we need to drop our database table you could update it if you wanted to but we aren't running this in production. This is just in development, so we can just drop our database and be saved from having to do that. So once our database is up, I'm actually gonna open up another terminal and run a Docker command here and connect to the database. And once I'm in the database, Serverlet, we're going to run Mongo, and now we're in that terminal, and we can look at our databases. We should have one here called Core, and then we can use Core and view what it has, and it has items and users, and we're just going to drop both of those. So once that is complete, now we have no existing documents. So our server is still running over here. If we came back and ran some of our requests from last time and sent like a request to user, we get an empty array and to item, we get an empty array. So we have nothing in our data set at all, which is good. So now we can go save these models if we hadn't already. And now we can get to actually creating pagination on the API itself. So in order to do that, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to do item first. We're gonna come over here to item in the read file that we've made. And you can see right now we just have a generic get. So if we had say 30 items in here, it wouldn't matter um, if there was 10,000. If we ran against this route, it would give us all of them back at once. And we don't really want that because that could put strain on the server and it could put strain on the client and it could take a long time to complete. So we're gonna go ahead and make um, like 50 items and 50 users and I'll spare you all that tedious process. Okay, so during that quick little break, I made a thousand users and I made a thousand items and one user owns all of those items, but if we take a peek here at this user object request, we can see we have a ton of items and that took a little bit of time to complete, which is kind of what we're aiming to reduce. Now this first user, Kendrick Mills, is what I created all of the items under. So that person owns all of the items. You also see we now have a created at and updated at timestamp that we didn't have before. And you can see this is a huge list of users. But, so now that we have this, items is gonna be the same thing. There's content for each of them and there's a creator for each of them. And you'll notice the creator ID, like I said, is the same for all of them. But we also have this created at and updated at timestamp, which is important. So now that we've done that, we can actually get over to our pagination. So we're going to open up our read file under item and once we're here, this is actually pretty straightforward. We can use our existing route if we want to. You generally wouldn't wanna have just to get all. So that's why I'm going to replace this route. If you felt like you wanted to have something that allowed a user to get everything, you could keep it. I don't want that. So I'm going to use this existing route. So some things that you need to decide up front is if you want to use what's called a query or if you want to use a parameter. We've already used parameters like with ID and that's pretty straightforward. So we could just have a like slash items slash 
page slash two if we wanted to do it that way. I'm going to do query, which will make it look something more like slash item and uh, then page equals two because I think that makes a little bit more sense. But you could do it either way. It, it won't really matter. You'll just have to change it from request.param or request.query depending on what you use. So the one thing that we do need to decide up front though is if you want your pages to start at zero or if you want your pages to start at one. Google, for example, has pages start at one, at least on the user facing side of things because most people's minds don't work in a number start at zero kind of sequence. They want one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So I'm going to make things start at one user facing, but as far as our database is concerned, they of course still have to start at zero. So we have to have a couple conditions enabled to catch that. And so first we're going to need a page size and I'm gonna make this a constant and I'm just gonna make it 20, 20 items. And that way, that's what we're going to get back no matter what. You could make this also configurable so someone could pass in a page and a page size and that really lets the user have flexibility in terms of what they're querying for. Again, I'm not gonna do that. I want this to be more hard set. So now that we have this set in place, we can actually go about doing our adjustments to our query. So we're going to need a dot limit and this is going to be, again, our page size. And we're actually going to need a dot skip. And what this is going to be is how many items we're skipping over to start and then where we're applying our query to. So this is going to be our current page, which we haven't defined yet, um, times our page size. Because if we're on page one, we wanna skip 20 items and then start querying. If we're on page two, we want to skip 40 items and then start querying. So that's why we have this limit and skip. But we also need to know if the items API has enough to do the page that someone is requesting. So we're going to do item dot count. Now item dot count works like any other Mongo query. It can be chained off of a promise. So we're going to do a dot then. And this is an item count. And we're going to move the rest of this inside of this dot count. So now we have access to this item count inside of where we're going to be doing our query and that's useful because we can say if our current page um, times the page size is greater than our item count, we can just return And how you want to implement this is up to you. I'm going to say this is a bad request because they're requesting a non-existent page. And it's just going to be an empty object because there's, there's nothing there to return. So I'm actually just going to return an empty array. And that short circuits having to run this query across the entire database, which is pretty nice. But we still need this current page. So let's make that. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. Um, you could do it with a ternary function or you could do it with a math function. I'm gonna do the uh, ternary. So we say our request dot query dot page works just like the reference with ID. It's whatever you name it in the query. And we're going to say, if this is not greater than zero, then we're going to return one because we want at a minimum to give back a page number one to our lower function. 
And then we're going to say, if we have a value greater than zero, then cool, our query is our page minus one. And actually, that's a good point. We should make this zero. So the reason we do this is so that our database can still think of it in terms of zero counting up, whereas our user will see it as one counting up. So now that that's all set, we have our item count. We're doing this conditional well. We're doing our limit and our skip. Now we need to define a sort so we get consistent paging. And we're going to do a sort by created at, and we're going to do negative one, meaning most recent first. So we save this, and now we can come over here and we did this on items, let's do that request. And it comes back really quick. And you can see there's definitely not a thousand items there. So it looks like we're successful. So that's working great, but now we'd also like to let our users know how they can determine ahead of time what the limit of the pages are and how many items there are total. So we're gonna add a couple of properties in here. And we're gonna keep our items just the way that it is. And we're going to then add a page, which is going to be just our original request query dot page. And then we're going to also set a total, which is going to be this item count that we got earlier. And then if you want to, you can return the limit that's up to you. I'm going to because it seems useful. And you can call this page size, you can call this limit, whatever you want. Uh, I'm actually gonna stick with page size for consistency. And actually we should adjust this. We're gonna need to give this some other property reference here. So let's do, oh, I don't know, um, content. And then we can come over here and send this request again. And now you can see content is collapsible. So we should be able to minimize all of these. And for some reason that's not working how it should, or this API parser or this JSON parser is just continuing to allow them to be minimized, which I think is the case. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom of these 20, we can now see we get our total and we get our page size which is what we expected, but there should be one more thing. We should see a page in here somewhere and we're not seeing that. And the reason for that is we didn't pass it. So our request over here, as you can see, is just item, it's the default. So we're not giving a page back. We should be no matter what. So if this isn't set, we wanna give back a value of one. So now if we run that request one more time and scroll down here to the bottom for our values, we're on current page one, we're getting 20 items back and there's a thousand total. That lets the clients know what their limits should be. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing to our user. And this is really gonna look almost identical, um, but it's a little hard to copy paste parts of this. We're gonna get our page size and current page first Now, depending on the application you're writing, your users may not necessarily be um, able to have pagination. They may not be searchable or queryable in this fashion at all. That's fine. I'm just doing it here as an example. And again, we have to do things a little bit differently, but we can essentially copy this and just swap out item for user. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to save time. Because it's much easier to, you know, update a few properties than rewrite that entire code, which should be fine. I skipped one property that I needed to update. 
This item count should be user count. And this should also be user count. I think that's it. So now if we try that again, there we go. Now that's what we expect. And again, you don't have to change this property, this top property, if you don't want to, for example, you can just do users and it'll get mapped to its own array in, in an object anyway. So this changes to users. You can do that. If you want to be consistent across your API, you can leave it as content in both places, or if you want them each to be distinct, you can do that same thing over here in items and just change this to be items. And then if you run this again, it comes back as items. So it's really whatever way you want to do it. It doesn't matter. Either way is fine. But so now that that limit is set, we can actually test and see that our paging is working how we would expect it to. So let's come back over here to our requests and it's going to look almost identical to how we ran it originally. We're just going to add a question mark for our query page and let's say page two. Now we already had notes over here, so I suppose I should reference those instead. So we had this one. Uh, had some basic content in here. Let's see if this changes now when we rerun this. It looks like it does. And furthermore, we can come down here and see that we're on page two and the current page size total is what we would expect. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next one. Take care.